ask you guys to uh, cover uh, Brother Luis in prayer. Amen. Um, his mother's in the hospital. He had to do an emergency flight to Mexico in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we're just praying for people's families in Jesus' mighty name. I, I look around and I see a lot of new faces in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I see a brother back there. Uh, I, I met him in the gym and in the sauna. Someone shout amen. Hallelujah. And I'm so blessed. Give a big round of applause in the mighty name of Jesus. He says, Pastor Sam, I'm, I'm looking for a church. I haven't been to church, but, but I thank the Lord, amen, that we've, uh, we, we, we're able to evangelize and minister the word of God, even in, in, in hot places. Someone shout amen. amen. Are y'all with me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. So I thank the Lord for that, amen, for all that he's doing here in House of Prayer, Fellowship Ministries, amen, hallelujah. Uh, uh, a lot of exciting times, a lot of things that God is doing in Jesus' mighty name. And just keep the church in prayer as we continue to move forward. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, tell your neighbor, we're going to move forward in Jesus' name. Tell your neighbor, how many are going to move forward in the mighty name of Jesus? We're going to move forward. Give a big round of applause. Say, I'm going to move forward in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, man of God. Hallelujah. I see Evangelist David in the house. I'm going to give a big round of applause for Evangelist David. I love it that this man of God, every time he steps into the church, he has a blue suit on. Someone shout amen. And he said, he said, the reason why, Pastor, I preach with the blue suit on is because that's what God revealed to me, how he was going to use me to preach. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Someone give a big round of applause in the mighty name of Jesus. I tell him I had that same vision for the first four years. You wouldn't find me wearing anything other but a three-piece suit. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. But I thank the Lord that we're changing seasons and uh uh, uh, we're changing a little bit our outfits. Someone shout amen, hallelujah. So if you see Pastor Sam kind of cool, kind of fresh, amen, it's because my wife styles me. Someone shout amen. And for those that know, hallelujah, Pastor Sam is I'm very obedient to my wife. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? What she says goes, amen, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. But other than that, I'm so, I'm so blessed to have you guys here in the house of God. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Uh, uh, and excited. How many here were blessed with uh, uh, Wednesday's words? I'm going to give a big round of applause for those who were here. I, ha I had a couple people tell me after service, Pastor Sam, that word was on time. That word was for me. That God will make me forget my troubles in Jesus' mighty name. And I was praying and ministering and asking God, God, what is it that you want me to preach on this morning? And God gave me the word, how long will you cry? Oh, I, didn't, I know I didn't get it. I only get a bunch of amen. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Tell your neighbor, how long will you cry in Jesus' mighty name? Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. I don't know about you in Jesus' mighty name, but the way I have my, my, my little niece serenity wired in the mighty name of Jesus, every time we're in, at an event, every time that things are going well in our lives, every time that we get together as a family, it's funny that she just always starts to cry about something. Someone shout amen. And I think about it, and, 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 I, and I meditate on this church, and I say, what is it to cry about? We see that she has loving parents with her, her grandparents still with her. That she can, hallelujah, she wasn't raised like us where we had to share of water and ask the kitchen for all these type of lemons to make lemonade. Someone shout amen. And share all these type of plates that my baby girl, hallelujah, she can order her own plate and she can order all the Coke and Pepsi that she like. What is she crying about? Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? And oftentimes don't we find ourselves in that same place where the things that we asked for God did. But then we can't see the blessings all around us. Someone shout amen. I tell people all the time, pastor, hallelujah, when they start to cry and start to complain and start to murmur. You know what I tell them nowadays? Because Putting up with stuff, I, I, I did that for the first seven years. I'm, I'm turning 30, someone shout amen. Now I just give them to them raw, someone shout amen. I tell them, okay, hallelujah, I hear you, but how about you come with me to the hospital and you would see people in worse conditions than yourself. What are you crying about? Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me in this place? And the Spirit of God took me to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, verse 9. If you have your Bibles, please turn there. If you don't, I have the notes for you, hallelujah, in Jesus' mighty name. I'm going to do quite a bit of reading this morning, but I believe, hallelujah, this word is going to bless somebody in this house in Jesus' mighty name. Are y'all with me? 
And if you guys know this, hallelujah, church, amen, the, 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 the louder you shout amen, the more you shout amen, the faster I preach and the faster y'all can go home and watch the NBA Finals. All right, now, I guess, I'm, I guess someone shout amen. Are y'all with me in this place? 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 9 through 28. We're going to start on verse 9. How many here are there with me? Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Now, for, to give you guys some context, in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15, God has given specific instructions to Saul. Someone shout amen. Tell your neighbor, Saul was the people's choice, not God's choice. Saul was the people's choice, not God's choice. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Saul was the people's choice. In fact, listen to me now. Saul was asked for by the people. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. Saul, hallelujah, came because God's people wanted to be like the other nations. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? And sometimes we get in trouble, hallelujah, because we don't know what we ask for. Someone shout amen. Sometimes we get in trouble because we don't know what we're praying for. Someone shout amen. There's some people that say, there's some, Pastor, I want to get married already. I say, well, glory to God. But get ready to cook clean, hallelujah, and still work because it's California. Someone shout amen. But when you were single, hallelujah, you can come to church and then after church go to Denny's and hang out with the sisters and then go home and pray. Someone shout amen. But now that you're married, your husband won't let you go anywhere. Tell your neighbor, be careful what you ask for. Be careful what you pray for. Someone shout amen. And the word of God says, hallelujah, to give you guys some context, God tells Saul, I want you to completely overtake the Amalekites and destroy them and do not keep nothing. Someone shout amen. God has given them a specific order. Someone shout amen. And now we find ourselves in the verse 9. How many are with me? It says, but Saul and the army spared Agag. And the best of the sheep and cattle, someone shout amen. The fat calves and lambs, everything that was what? Everything that was good. Other translations is everything that appealed to them. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. I'm talking about hallelujah. We got to stop the crying. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. God has spoken to Saul. I want you to completely eradicate the Amalekites and not keep nothing, hallelujah. But Saul wasn't completely obedient, someone shout amen. He says, hallelujah, he killed some things, but the things that were pleasing to his eye, he didn't eradicate. Someone shout amen. Tell your neighbor, be careful with what is pleasing with the eye. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me, hallelujah? Be careful with what is pleasing with the eye in Jesus' mighty name. Ah, y'all ain't going to get me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Are y'all with me? Some of the brothers. Pastor, I'm praying for a, a sister with a Coca-Cola body and, uh, and, and looks like Kim, K whatever. Hallelujah. But you don't know she look good on the outside, but on the inside, my God. Hallelujah. Someone shout amen. Here we go. It says they were unwilling to destroy completely. Someone shout amen. But everything that was despised and weak, they totally what? They totally what? Here we go. Verse 10. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. Someone shout amen. It says, God said, I regret that I have made Saul king. Someone shout amen. What did God say? What did God say? God says, I regret. Someone shout amen. That I make Saul king. Hallelujah. Because he has turned away from me. And has not carried out my instruction. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Because he has what? Because he has what? He has turned away from me and has not carried out my instruction. Here we go. Here we go. Samuel was what? Samuel was what? Samuel was angry and he cried out to the Lord all the night. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Samuel was what? And he cried out to the Lord all the night. Verse, here we go. Early in the morning. Tell your neighbor early in the morning. Tell your neighbor early in the morning. His mercies are new every what? His mercies are new every what? Are y'all with me? You can cry all night, hallelujah, but wake up early in the morning. Someone shout amen. You might have had a bad Saturday, hallelujah, but this Sunday morning come and wake up and say, Lord, you are for me. You are with me. You got something new for me. Someone shout amen. It says early in the morning, Samuel got up. 
and went to meet Saul, but he was told, Saul has gone to Carmel. There he has set up a what? A monument in his own honor. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Other translations for monument is hand. That means he set up his own monument or he set up, hallelujah, things to honor what his own hands did. Someone shout amen. Does that make sense? Are y'all with me, hallelujah? Are y'all with me? Do you see God in any of this? Are y'all with me? Do you see God in any of this? So tell your neighbor, stop crying. All right, here we go. We're getting it. Someone shout amen. It says, hallelujah. But he was told Saul went to Carmel there. He set up a monument in his own honor. And he turned and, and gone on down to Gilgal. Here we go. When Samuel reached him, his Saul said what? Oh, Saul became real churchy now. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. Are y'all with me? The Lord what? The Lord what? The Lord what? The Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Someone bow your head as we pray. Father God, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence that's in this house. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would come and move and touch every heart, soul, and mind in the mighty name of Jesus. We set up an atmosphere of revelation, of glory, and of praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we believe, Lord, that you have a message and a word for those who are in this house this Sunday morning. We thank you, Father. We thank you that early in the morning we will wake up and see your glory. Early in the morning, Father, we will get up and go receive our portion, our fresh manna of the day, Father. And this morning, Lord, I release an anointing of stop crying, someone shout amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, I release an anointing, Father, of stop complaining or murmuring or talk about what happened in the past, Father, because, Father, you do something new early in the morning. And all those in agreement this morning, someone give a big round of applause in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> Point number one, hallelujah, you must be careful with the things you become close to. Someone shout amen. You must be careful with the things you become close to in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. See, one thing you have to understand, the Bible says that God had given Saul instruction. Someone shout amen. Paul, uh, uh, God had told Saul, Saul, I want you to completely eradicate and destroy my enemies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And one thing that I see about the church is that God still speaks to the church. But oftentimes we like to pick and choose which word we want to obey. Someone shout amen. We like to pick and choose, hallelujah, what we keep and what we let go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And God had given an instruction to Saul. He says, Saul, you are the king. The people have chosen you, but you have a job to do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the job is to annihilate and wipe out and not keep for yourself the things that are pleasing to your eyes. And you know what happens oftentimes, church, hallelujah, is we come into the house of God, we get saved, we sing a couple songs, we speak in tongues and we come to Bible study, but we still can't let go of the things that are pleasing in our eyes. Someone shout amen. Am I speaking to somebody? And listen to me now, hallelujah. The things that are pleasing to your eyes, hallelujah. Who did Samson fall under? Someone shout amen. Delilah, someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. Are y'all, why? Because it was pleasing in his eyes in Jesus' mighty name. And there are things that are pleasing, that are beautiful, but not everything is good for you. Not everything is going to benefit you. Not everything is going to edify you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor, don't be moved by what you see. Don't be moved by what you hear. Someone shout amen. Oftentimes, hallelujah, the reason why we find ourselves crying, the reason why we find ourselves complaining, the reason why we find ourselves murmuring is because we got our hands into something that God said you should not even touch, you should not even mess with, you should not even play with. I'm speaking to a church this Sunday morning that I made a decision not to touch the honey. I made a decision not to be moved by what is appealing. I made a decision to get right with God and say, Say, if it's not of God, I don't want no part of it. If it's not of the Lord, then don't attach my name to it. I need to do what God the Father has called me to do. And the Bible says, the Bible says that Saul sinned and he tried to hide his sin. Someone shout amen. 
And the word of the, listen, the word of the Lord came to Samuel. And the Lord says to Samuel, Samuel, Saul will no longer be king. And what did Samuel start to do? <sighs> Tell you never be careful what you get close to. Tell you never be careful what you get close to. You want to know, hallelujah, why Samuel started to cry and wanted to change the will of God. You want to know why? Because they had something in common. Someone shout amen. They had something in common. Listen to me now, hallelujah. You know what they had in common, Samuel and Saul? How many of you guys know, hallelujah, when you, when you find somebody that has some things in common, you become best friends. How many of you have been to a coffee shop and, and the person right in front of you, the girl gets a mochiate, latte, double sugar with a shot of espresso. And girl, that's my recipe. My God, I knew there was something about you. How many of you guys know what I'm talking about? Are y'all with me? We become close to things, hallelujah, or people, hallelujah, that we have in common. Tell your neighbor, be careful what you get close to. You want to know, hallelujah, what Samuel and Saul had in common? Saul, hallelujah, was asked by the people, someone shout amen. Are y'all with me now? Are y'all with me? The Bible says as the Israelites asked God, they, and they asked the prophet Samuel, we want a king to be like the other nations, someone shout amen. And what did Saul and Samuel have in common? Who asked for Samuel? Who asked for Samuel? Hannah. Hannah. Someone shout amen. So you know what? They had something in common. Tell you never be careful what you get close to. Someone shout amen. Every day, hallelujah, when the prophet Samuel would speak to Saul, they would both come into contact. They were about to have sweet fellowship and say, brother, you got the same thing that I got. We were both asked of, hallelujah. We have something in common in Jesus' mighty name. But just because you have something in common with somebody or something doesn't mean it's God. Oh, my Lord, hallelujah. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me in this place? That's what I love about House of Prayer Fellowship Ministries. You know, what, you know what they say about House of Prayer? House of Prayer's on fire. House of Prayer got Latino, got Mexican, got African American, got Asian, got Caucasian, everything in the book they got. Someone shout amen. Because we might have a different backstory, we might have a different neighborhood, we may have a different upbringing, but one thing we have in common is we're not here for people, we're here to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. I'm here to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. I'm here to be filled by the anointing and the presence of God. And if nothing is in common with you, and that doesn't align with you, I want no part of it. If you ain't here for Jesus, hallelujah, don't invite me to your party. Someone shout amen. If you ain't here for the Holy Spirit, the only party I have is a Holy Spirit party. Where the Spirit comes down, it transforms lives. When the Spirit comes down, lives are delivered. Demons flee at the name of Jesus Christ. The only thing we have in common is that we've come to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Someone give them glory in this place. Tell your neighbor, careful with the things you become close to. Samuel and Saul had something in common. Someone shout amen. And the, listen, when the word came, when the word came to Samuel, the Lord spoke to Samuel, someone shout amen. And he said, Saul is no longer going to be king. Why? Because he disobeyed me. And you want to know, listen, you want to know, hallelujah, why he started to cry? Because Samuel didn't quite yet know the whole picture. Someone shout amen. You want to know, hallelujah, I've seen people and Christians start to cry and they don't know the whole story. Ah. Tell your neighbor, there's only one side to the story. Are y'all with me, Hallelujah. Samuel started to cry, hallelujah. But Samuel didn't know that the whole time, hallelujah, what, what the, listen, listen, Saul was good at being real churchy with the prophet. Someone shout amen. How many of you what I'm talking about? You want to know how? You want to know why? Because when it came, how, how, did, he, how did he meet the, the prophet? The Lord bless you, prophet Samuel. Right? What happens? A lot of times we're good at covering up as Christians. So Someone shout amen. A lot of times we're good, hallelujah, coming in the church and holy, holy is thou. But deep down, hallelujah, on the inside, the Bible says everything that is done in the darkness will always come to light. 
Someone shout amen. Tell your neighbor, you can trick me, but you can't trick God. And I'm done with those tricking days. Someone shout amen. Y'all ain't got to hear nothing about me in Jesus' mighty name. I know I ain't the only one. Shout amen. Tell your neighbor, he didn't know the whole story. You know, hallelujah, I'm telling somebody, stop crying. Stop crying about things you don't know the whole story about. Someone shout amen. A lot of us here, we got to get out of hallelujah. Thank God we don't, they don't show no more J Jerry Seinfeld and Maury show and all that gossip shows. When we were kids, amen, we just wait for, the, for our parents to leave and we were stuck on the TV. Because we love the cheese, man. We love the gossip. Someone shout amen. We love the backbiting. We love the wigs being thrown from one hallelujah stage to the other. We love all that mess. Someone shout amen. We love all that mess. And if you don't, you're lying because we all got flesh. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. I know this is the real church. I don't know. Someone shout amen. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Point number one, careful with the things you become close to. Someone shout amen. In the book of Genesis chapter 13, verse 8, it says, So Abraham said to Lot, let's not have any quarreling or any conflict. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? But there's some people that they just like conflict. Someone shout amen. They, they go into a family party, hallelujah, and your hair's already up because you're ready to get into it with your tia or your auntie, someone shout amen. You just go into that, hallelujah. You don't even come with high heels. You come hallelujah, with sandals because you know you're about to pop off in Jesus' mighty. There are some people that love conflict. Someone shout amen, hallelujah. And it says here, so Abraham said to Lot, let's not have any quarreling or conflict between you and me or between your herders and mine. For we are what? For we are what? We are close relatives. Someone shout amen. Tired neighbor, be careful what you become close to. Someone shout amen. Be careful what you become close to. Someone shout amen. Listen, just because you, you, you guys are close, hallelujah, does not mean y'all meant to be together. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me now? I know I ain't the only one that have an auntie that I love her from far. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. I know I ain't the only one that I got a cousin that I love him from far in Jesus' mighty name. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. Because the minute we come together and we meet at the barbecue, there's trouble. Girl, I know you, you gained some weight. Girl, who you talking? You gained about 20. I can see it. Your high heels are asking them for faith because they're bending in Jesus' mighty. Tell you, be careful what you become close to. Tell you, be careful what you become close to. Are y'all with me? So Abraham, listen, listen. The, listen, the Bible says blessed are the what? The peacemakers. Someone shout Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers. So Abraham tells Lot, listen, Abraham did everything for Lot. Someone shout amen. God didn't speak to Lot. God spoke to Abraham. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. And there are people that have a heart like Abraham. There are people you want to save everybody. Someone shout amen. You want to help everybody. You want to comfort everybody. But one thing you got to know, not everybody's for you. So I never stop the crying. Abraham said, hallelujah, listen. I've given you everything. I've blessed you. I've been with you, and you still don't appreciate me. So let's do this. Hallelujah. I don't want no conflict. I don't want no trouble. Let's separate. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me now? Tell you, be careful what you become close to. And it says here, hallelujah. Someone shout amen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, no, we, 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 we like our little neighborhood. We like our little, we like our little brunch sisters, mimosa sisters. Someone shout amen. We like them all, someone shout amen. And it says here, after Lot, verse 14, how many here are with me? Had gone, it says, the Lord said to Abraham, look as far as you can see in every direction, north, south, east, west, and all the land that you see, and I will give you your offspring forever. Listen, it says, after Lot had what? After Lot was gone and out of the picture. Time never be careful what you become close to. When the word of the Lord came to the prophet Samuel, he started to cry. He started to pray. He started to complain. Why? Because he tried to change the mind of God. And listen, hallelujah, let me tell you something. When it's God's will and it's God's doing, it don't matter how much you complain. It don't matter how much you cry. It don't matter how, what type of face you give to God. His will will come to pass always. Oh, you got to get that. There's some things that your prayer won't change. 
there's some things that your faith won't change. Listen, hallelujah. Joseph prayed every night, Lord, you gave me dreams. You gave me visions. But since the day I was born, since the day I was old enough, a oh, 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 hate came my way. A oh, jealousy came my way. My brother sold me into slavery. Potiphar's wife accused me. I'm here in this dungeon in this dark place. God, can you please remove this stone and remove this stone from me? And God says no. Never, there's some things that you will not be able to change. How many here are being blessed? So my question to you, hallelujah, are you crying for things that God said is not for you? Someone shout amen. Are you complaining and mad about things? Listen, hallelujah, before God changes anybody, he'll change you first. Are y'all with me? Some of us, we come to church, hallelujah. I know the sister's going through something because she hasn't texted me back. And because she don't text me back, God's going to deal with her. Like if God is on your agenda. Like if the whole world removes around what we think. Tell your neighbor, stop crying. Tell your neighbor, hallelujah, wake up. Because early in the morning, his mercies are new. You can't stay there, hallelujah, in that depression. You can't stay there in that season of your life. You got to know, I got to wake up because I have a God that things might change. I may not like the change, but I believe that he's working all things out in my good, in Jesus' mighty name. I serve a God that works all things out for my good, even when I don't understand it, even when I can't see it, even when I can't comprehend it. I serve a God that works all things out for my good. So the only thing I'm going to get close to is at the feet of Jesus. Someone shout amen. Listen, hallelujah. The psalmist said, don't put your faith and your trust in men or in women. Put your faith in God. Someone shout amen. The psalmist said, hallelujah, whom, hallelujah, does my salvation and my redeemer come from, hallelujah. It comes from the God. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Tell your neighbor, hallelujah. If you're going to get close to anybody, hallelujah, get close to Jesus. If you want your heart to be healed, if you want your heart to be restored, if you want things to start changing in your life, hallelujah, don't be like Martha, busy with distractions. Be like Mary and say, Jesus, I'm not going to leave here until you wipe every tear from my eye. Say, Jesus, I'm not going to get close to the nosy sister in church. I'm not going to get close to the nosy brother in church. I'm going to take this in prayer and get close to you. Someone give a big round of applause in a mighty name. Thank you, man of God. We have to be careful where we become close to. Someone shout amen. How many here know the story of Rahab? Rahab the prostitute. Someone shout amen. amen. Listen, you know what Rahab did? Rahab became close to the two spies who were attached and aligned to God in Jesus' mighty name. Are y'all with me? Does that make sense? Listen, Rahab, hallelujah, was in the city in the city where God decided, hallelujah, to completely eradicate and wipe out the enemies of Israel, someone shout amen. But you know what Rahab said? Rahab says, I have heard of your God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I may be in this tower. I may be under, hallelujah, security right now. But I know the God that you guys serve. So Rahab said, I'm going to help out the men and the women of God. I'm going to alienate myself with the things of God before of my people. Does that make sense? Someone shout amen. Rahab made a decision to say and tell the king, she says, hallelujah, the spies are not here. Does that make sense? You want to know why? Because Rahab understood the God that they served. Does that make sense? Listen, just because we're comfortable, just because, hallelujah, things are nice in our life in Jesus' name does not mean God, does not mean that God won't test your face and get you to a place where you say, God, hallelujah, I may not be comfortable, but I've become comfortable in being uncomfortable because I want to do the will of the Father before I want to do my will. Someone shout amen, hallelujah. Be careful what you become close to in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Point number two, hallelujah, God wants obedience more than sacrifice. God wants obedience more than sacrifice. God wants obedience more 
then sacrifice. Someone shout amen. You can come here this morning and say, Lord, forgive me, and the Lord will forgive you of your sins. Does that make sense? But the Bible says that without holiness, we will never see God. Does that make sense? Hallelujah. This is where you come this morning and say, Father, forgive me of my sins. I confess of my sins. I confess that I've, I've touched on things I shouldn't touch. I'm doing things I shouldn't do. Hallelujah. But not only do I confess it, but I start to act out on it. God, hallelujah, wants obedience more than sacrifice. And the word of God says in the book of Isaiah, it says here, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Someone shout amen. The Lord says your iniquities, your sin, your hidden sin has separated you from your God in Jesus' mighty name. You want to know why God tells Samuel? He says, listen, I have another king and I chose somebody better. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? The Lord tells Saul, I have chose somebody better. You want to know why? It wasn't because Saul, hallelujah, was strong, stronger or, or, or more handsome. It was because David's heart was right before the Lord. Someone shout amen. David did everything that he can do to completely live in the will of the Father. Someone shout amen. It says, here we go, hallelujah. And this is why a lot of times in the church now, someone shout amen. Listen, I've been preaching the same fire and brimstone since I first got saved nine to ten years ago. I have not changed my preaching. Someone shout amen. Why? Hallelujah. Because when I got saved, I had an alcohol problem, drug problem, women problem, every problem you can name in the book. But when the preacher from Kenya came in and said, you got to get sanctified, you got to change your life, that the Holy Spirit's going to come and completely renew you. I believed in the word of God. I believed that God, hallelujah, was going to do something new in my life, that the change had to start with me. Someone shout amen. And it says here, hallelujah, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden your, his face from you. Someone shout amen. You know, we have two people in the church. Someone shout amen. One people in the church are Moses. You know what Moses is doing? He's up on the mountain in the presence of God. Someone shout amen. Tell your neighbor, climb the mountain. Are y'all with me? Listen, we don't, need, we, don't, we don't need the best musicians for the Holy Spirit to move. Hallelujah. We just need hearts that are hungering after the presence of God. That's the truth. That's the truth. Someone shout amen. We don't need the perfect preacher that has over 200,000 followers on Facebook for you to get a word in the mighty name of Jesus. We need somebody who has come here for Jesus. That's all we need. And it says here, hallelujah, it says your sins have separated you from seeing God. And someone shout amen. And you know what, hallelujah, you know what we're good at doing? We're good at putting the blame, like the song, you can put the blame on me. Someone shout amen. You can put the blame on the church. You can put the blame on the pastor. And that's why we don't see God. Maybe I got to try this other church that's down the street from this church. And maybe they got more of the Holy Ghost than they got over here. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me now? Listen, and it says, well, Moses... While Moses was up on the mountain riding the tablet, listen, he was up on the mountain receiving revelation. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. He was up on the mountain receiving strength. This is what happens, hallelujah, when you make a decision to say, Lord, I want to do right by you. Lord, I want to live in holiness by you. Lord, I don't just want to come to church. I want to be the church. I want to be Holy Ghost filled. I want to be in your presence day in and day out in my life. Listen, you want to know how he was receiving strength from God? The Bible says he came down with what? The, the books. Does what? Someone shout amen. Listen, have you ever tried to get a rock and put your name on dry concrete? Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? It's impossible, correct? But when you get into the presence of God, God starts to do things that don't seem possible. Does that make sense? When you get into the presence of God, hallelujah. The Bible says that when Moses was up on the mountain, the people were in the bottom of the mountain. You know what they were doing? They were dancing and partying and using the gold that God blessed them with to build false idols. Tell your neighbor, what are you doing with your time? What are you doing with your time? 
What are you doing? Are you building? The Bible said Matthew 6, but seek first my kingdom and my righteousness and all things will be added. Tell your neighbor, stay on the mountain. You know what the Lord said to Elijah? Elijah, after he received a letter from Jezebel, that Je I was going to send the whole army to kill him after he had just finished calling down fire. You know what Elijah did? He runs away and he finds the darkest cave in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And he finds, hallelujah, you want to know why? Because when things don't start going our way, we like to hide. Someone shout amen. When things don't start going our way, hallelujah, we like to turn away and stop doing the things that God has called to do. Tell your neighbor, stop crying. And he was in such a funk, someone shout amen. The Bible says, let the weak say I am what? Let the weak say I am what? Let the weak say I am what? Let the weak say I am strong. But instead of Elijah saying he is strong, you know what he said? He says, hallelujah, Lord, take my life. Tell your neighbor, stop crying. The Lord, hallelujah, spoke to the prophet Samuel. Get up. How long are you going to mourn? How long are you going to cry in Jesus' mighty name? Things that I am doing that you know nothing of in Jesus' name. Instead of crying, God says, get in the presence of God. You got to make a decision in this week to say, Lord, I'm going to get out of my phone. I'm going to get out of my social media. Say, Lord, I'm going to get in my knees. I'm going to get in prayer. But I'm going to make a decision to seek the presence of God in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. If I'm going to cry, I'm not going to cry because of pain. I'm going to cry because the Lord is healing me from the inside out. I'm going up onto the mountain. I'm climbing up every tree to make sure that Jesus sees me and that I see Jesus I'm going to give a big round of applause. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says when the synagogue leader found that his, his daughter was sick, amen. How many of you guys know the story? Are y'all with me? The Bible says, listen, the minute everybody heard that the synagogue's leader's daughter was sick, you know what everybody did? Oh, you know what? It's going bad for you. Let me go check the cheese man too. Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me? Listen, ch ch check this out. You know, in, when it's a funeral, hallelujah, someone shout amen. You start to have people message you on Facebook that you haven't seen in 20 years. I'm so sorry for your loss. I got to say nothing. You know why, hallelujah? Because when, when we hear bad news, we love it in Jesus' name. Someone shout amen. Oh, yeah. Are y'all with me? This is why when you turn, listen, how many guys have turned on the news and you just watch for five minutes and you become depressed? You see what's happening at UCLA. You see what's happening, hallelujah, and Pakistan, Pakistan, all that Pakistan in Jesus' mighty name. You see what's happening, hallelujah, uh, in Washington, D.C. And you, man, Lord, have mercy. I need to get in prayer. This is this. I'm going to shout amen. Listen, when they found out that the synagogue's leader's daughter was sick, everybody went to the house. Does that make sense? Why? Hallelujah. Oh, poor little thing in Jesus' mighty name. You know what Jesus had to do? Jesus said, listen, it's your house. Get them out of here. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. Get all the crying. Listen, I can't do ministry in your crying. Someone shout amen. You know what Jesus did? He brought in Peter and two other apostles. Hallelujah. Why? Hallelujah. Because there are seasons in your life where you got to get rid of that cry. You got to get rid of complaining. You got to get rid of certain people and start bringing in men and women of God and start to do ministry. Jesus says, I want everybody out but Peter and two apostles. Someone shout amen. You got to tell the devil to get up out of your room in the mighty name of Jesus. You got to tell the devil to get up out of your bed in Jesus' name. You got to tell the devil to get up out of your emotions. You got to tell the devil to get up out of your children. Devil, you have no place. Get behind these Satan. If you got a kung fu, you like the action. Kick somebody. Kick the devil behind. Kick some people off your group chat. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. Kick some people out of your inner circle in Jesus' mighty name. Are y'all with me? And it says, hallelujah, thing number two. It says, hallelujah, your iniquities, your sin has kept you from seeking the face of God. Someone shout amen. The other day I was reading, I was reading, a, I was reading, I was hearing a, a pastor's testimony. 
and this pastor was going to preach at a conference. And in the conference, it was, it was, the conference was filled. The church was filled. You would think, man, God is really moving here. And this pastor finds out that the leader, hallelujah, who was leading the guitar um, at that time, hallelujah, found out that he, 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 he was up here on the stage and he was a homosexual. I'm going to shout amen. Are y'all with me now? And the pastor, knowing he was in sin, I'm going to shout amen. The pastor, knowing he was in sin, he allowed him to lead that whole worship. Do you think that's of God? Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Right now, listen, 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 hallelujah. John Wesley and all the, I was talking to my dad about this. All the great men and women of God who founded the church, who founded the Methodist church, someone shout amen. Are y'all with me now? I just saw hallelujah. And yes, I got to speak on it in Jesus' mighty name. In the Methodist church, they present themselves as a pastor or sister. And goes, I'm he, she, pronoun, and, and Jesus is, is lovers of all and, and sin of all in Jesus' mighty name. That's where the church is at right now. That's the truth. And this is why we're not seeing revival. Are y'all with me? This is why, hallelujah, we're not seeing a fresh outpouring of God's spirit. Why? It says because your sin has kept you from seeing the face of God. I don't know about you, but when I got saved, I knew, listen to me now, I knew that if I wanted really change in my life, I had to step away from certain things in my life. Are y'all with me? Listen, hallelujah. I don't care which preacher you preach. I'm going to preach the same thing. Listen, when I got saved, I knew that I had to cancel all my dating app links, whatever mess. I had to get rid of Snapchat. I had to get rid of Instagram just for some time. And Jesus, my name, ah, I lost y'all already. I lost you already. I lost you already. I can see it. Hallelujah. You were preaching good, Pastor, but don't go there. I'm going to shout amen. Are y'all with me in this place? Are y'all with me? You want to know, hallelujah, because there will be certain things in your life, listen to me now, that God will allow to get you on your knees. Does that make sense? You want to know, hallelujah, what got Samuel on his knees is when he heard that bad news. Does that make sense? You know, bad news, hallelujah, and things that you don't like and things that are difficult for us to accept is not for you just to stay the way it is. It's for you to get on your knees and say, Lord, you got to do something. Lord, you got to change my children. Lord, you got to change my grandchildren. Lord, I'm tired of seeing this generation be lost. Lord, I'm tired of seeing all this drug and alcoholics and women walking all over my street. Lord, this morning, I need change in my school. Lord, this morning, I make a decision in faith to get up in prayer, to get up in worship, to stand in faith and say that Jesus is still the Lord of my house that Jesus is still the Lord of my city that Jesus is still the Lord of California that Jesus is still the Lord of the United States of America <sighs> point number three I'm gonna hear being blessed go to your go to our notes where we're reading from first uh, 1 Samuel 15, 24. How many here are getting this? Then Saul said to Samuel, verse 24, the heat. It says, and Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I violated the Lord's commands and your instructions. I was afraid of what? I was afraid of what? I was afraid of what? So I gave in to them. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Like the woman of God says, it's compromise. What did Saul say? Listen, Saul, who was chosen to lead Israel, he says, hallelujah, the reason why, God, I couldn't do what you've called me to do is because I was scared more of men than you. Someone shout amen. He says, hallelujah, listen to me now, hallelujah. He said, hallelujah, I was afraid of the men, and I gave in to them. Someone shout amen. You know, there are people here, listen, I, I've gone to houses where the parents aren't the head of that home. Someone say, oh, I know I ain't the only one. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. All right? You want to know who runs that home? The kids and your little dog in Jesus' mighty name. Are y'all with me? We got husbands coming from work, working from 10 to 5, 10 to 12 hours, 
and they want to sit on the sofa to relax, don't you sit there. That's the dog's chair. I know when it's quiet, I'm preaching good. Someone shout amen. Someone I'm going to give a big round of applause. In my <laughs> Pastor, you were going good. Just don't mess with my talk about Chihuahua. You were going good. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? And now, hallelujah. And now, hallelujah. Now, this, this, listen, listen to me now. This is why. Listen to me now. You want to know why we have un, uh, the unhappiest generation of children that we have now? Are y'all with me? Because nowadays, it's not hallelujah. You're going to have eggs with beans, some little grits, and that's it. Don't shout amen. Are y'all with me? A good, healthy breakfast. Are y'all with me now? You want to know? No. Mom, first, I don't like your cooking. Mom, I'd rather go to McDonald's and get the number five with the kids menu in Jesus' mighty name. And they've had McDonald's for the last year. Oh, someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Uh, listen, I don't know about you, but I, I come from a home. Listen, what we have, you eat. That's it. That's where I was raised. Someone shout amen. Can't make, can't make down, can't make down. I got a toy for you. Someone shout amen. I got a toy for you, hallelujah, and it's leather. Come on, shout amen. Have somebody say, Pastor, that's because I'm scared of disciplining my children. They, they, they might call the cops. I, I, you know, I told them, I said, listen. I said, listen, hallelujah. You don't got to be scared of the, uh, the, you got to be scared of me because I'm going to go to jail to get your behind spank, to get you right. Someone shout amen. Because I refuse to have the government raise my children. I birth them. I carry them. I discipline them. I will teach them the things of God in Jesus' mighty name. I'm not scared of what men think. Amen. Shout amen. In the book of Acts, hallelujah, glory to Jesus. In the book of Acts, the apostles, the apostles were persecuted by the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they said, listen, you have filled all of Israel with this teaching of Jesus Christ. Someone shout amen. And you want to know what the response was from the apostles? They said we have two options. Listen, hallelujah. Are you with me now? You have two options. Listen, mama. You have two options. Someone shout amen. Are you all with me? You either cry right now because your child says, mom, you're, you're, not, you're the worst mom ever. You don't let me sleep over nobody's house. And you don't let me stay after 12 o'clock. Someone shout amen. amen. Ah, come on. You either cry right now because they don't like you. Or you cry after while you're visiting them in jail. <laughs> cry now and laugh later. The devil's a liar. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. Are y'all with me? Cry now and laugh later. You ain't going to be laughing when that judge gives them the 20 years. Someone shout amen. And you're going to be laughing there. It's because I wanted to be my, my. Oh, you ain't the best friend. They go. Their best friend is Jesus. You're the parent. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. Oh. Oh. Amen. Are y'all with me in this place? Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. I know missionaries loving this preaching in Jesus' mighty name. Are y'all with me in this place? I told the pastor, I, I don't know why y'all need uh, injections here. The only thing I was injected with was leather in Jesus' mighty name. I wasn't born with this because I'm Brazilian. Hallelujah. I work for this. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me in this place? Three, the dangers of asking or coveting to be like others. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? The Bible says in the book of 1 Samuel 8 verse 18, it says, when the day comes, you will cry out for relief. Someone shout amen. 
from the king that you have chosen. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? I'll say it again. I'll read it. You got to get this right now. Say, be careful of being like others. It, it says, when the day comes, you will cry out for relief from the king that you have chosen. Someone shout amen. It says, here we go. It says, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. Then we will be like all the other nations. Someone shout amen. Be careful what you ask for. Are y'all with me in this place? Be careful what you pray for. Be careful trying to be like other people. Be careful trying to covet other people's things. Someone shout amen. amen. Are y'all with me? Because, Lord, I need that brand new BMW that the sister just got. You don't know sister got a 600, 700, 800, and she got good credit. You got bad credit. So your, your bill's going to be about 1,200. Then you're really going to be crying. Am I preaching to somebody? He says, hallelujah. He says, the reason why, hallelujah, I've rejected you, the re listen, you don't know what you're asking for. He says, the reason why you're asking for is because you stop putting your eyes on me and you start putting your eyes on the world. You want to know why we cry? Listen, you want to know why we cry often? It's the truth. It's because we stop asking for the things that God wants to give us. And we start asking for the things that sound nice, that sound good. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Listen, hallelujah. Before I got married, my prayer was this. I say, Lord, I want a wife that loves you more than anything. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. I don't just want this. I don't want someone that comes to church. I want someone that loves you more than anything. I want someone that has reverent fear of you. I want someone, hallelujah, that's a worshiper and worships you in spirit and in truth. And listen to me, hallelujah, good things come with time. Are y'all with me? For those who cook from home, hallelujah, you can't have a good southern meal unless there's hours in the kitchen and mess all up in the kitchen. But you know that food's going to be good. Someone shout amen. Nowadays, hallelujah, those, those cup noodles, amen, I saw a video of how they make them. I'm not against them, hallelujah. Every once in a while, amen, a little tapatio, you know, but. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. I saw the way that they make these, 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 these nasty noodles. Someone shout amen. And people love it. Why? Because it's instant. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? It, 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 listen, it's instant and it's filling. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? I saw, listen, I saw a video that they operated on this young child. And the reason why was because this young child was constipated for almost two weeks. So they had to operate in that child. And guess what they pulled up out of that uh, the stomach? Just noodles, noodles and noodles and noodles. It's the truth. You want to know why? Why? Because we love things that are instant. Someone shout amen. We just, we just see a good-looking, tall, handsome brother walk into church. Lord, that's mine. Someone shout amen. You just see one brother just to one, two step. Hallelujah. I need that one. And you don't even know how the reason why they in church is because somebody told them they want to find a good girl, go to church. And you over here, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I'm going to shout amen. You know what's funny is when someone is saved, how many got, listen, listen, brothers, when you're saved, there's two prayers that you do. The first prayer is the prayer of salvation, Right? I accept Jesus, my Lord, and Savior. You want to know my second prayer was to God? Lord, I'm ready for a wife. Someone shout amen. Because I'm burning up on the inside. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? I had a woman problem, pornography problem, all the other problems you could think of. And God said, before I give you that, I'm going to strip you from it. I'm going to clean you. And you're not going to be dependent on flesh. You're going to be dependent on the Holy Spirit of God. But good things come with time. Be careful the dangers of coveting and being like others. Someone shout amen. Don't be in a hurry. 
Don't be in a hurry. Listen. Listen, when, when a sister is, is giving her testimony of what God has done for her husband, her wife, his wife, his family, amen, hallelujah, sit there and rejoice with them. Does that make sense? You want to know why, hallelujah? Because they've been praying for that miracle for 20 years. And just because you first started coming to church for one or two, three months, and you barely know who she is, does God like her better than me? Does God like him better than me? No. So I remember there's a price to be paid. There's a price to be paid for the anointing that's released upon your life. So Samuel says, he's crying, Lord, hallelujah. Change me. Say, crying, Lord, hallelujah, heal this situation. Be careful with song. And God says, no, hallelujah, because you don't know the whole story. Sorry, David, you got to wipe those tears. If I'm going to cry, it's because I'm going to cry in the presence of God. If I'm going to cry, it's because I have an encounter with God. If I'm going to cry, it's because God is healing me from the inside out in Jesus' mighty name. But other than that, I've stopped to cry. Hallelujah. Someone give a big round of applause. We're almost done. Point number four, and we're almost done. It says, hallelujah, no more. Leave it to luck. Leave it to God. I'll say it again. No more. Leave it to luck. But it's time for you to leave it to God. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me in this place? Here we go. In the book of Acts chapter 9 verse 15, we're almost done. It says here, hallelujah. It says, therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who had been with us the whole time with the Lord Jesus from amongst us. Someone shout amen. If you know some context in this story, hallelujah, in this context, they're looking for the, for, for, for the 12 apostles. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me now? How many of you guys know the Bible now? Are y'all with me? Why? Because what happened to Judas? He hung himself. Are y'all with me? He gave room to the enemy, right? right? So now they got to find the 12th man. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me now? So th listen, this is their understanding. Here we go. Acts 1 1. It says, therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time. Someone shout amen. Listen, isn't it a good reasoning? Don't they have a good, a good idea? Correct? Someone shout amen. Right? Right? Listen, if you're in church leadership, you, you would like somebody who's been in the church for a couple years. Correct? Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me now? So they say, hallelujah, let's choose somebody who has been with us this whole time, correct? We're almost done, amen, hallelujah. I thank the Lord we're not a church. We don't, we don't let no, no, no noise distract us. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Y'all watch a whole movie. You got noise here and noise there, but you real stuck on the movie. Someone shout amen. Here we go. Are y'all with me now? We're almost done. It says, then they prayed. Here we go. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over the apostolic ministry, correct? Here we go. When Judas left to go where he belongs. Here we go. Then they what? Then they what? Then they what? In other words, what does it mean to cast lots? What it means is to throw the dice or flip a coin. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me now? These men, listen, they prayed. They did a good prayer. Didn't they do a good prayer? Lord, can you show us their hearts, right? Are y'all with me? You know what, half the time, what happens in the church? We do nice prayers, but we don't wait to hear from the Lord. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me now? You're in the church on Friday night. Prayer. Lord, can you just give me confirmation and wait? Amen. Lord, is this the one? Tomorrow you're already saying I do and getting married. It's because I walked out of prayer service and I, I saw the star and that star reminded me of this tat right here. That's confirmation. Time number, you got to wait. Are y'all with me? Time number, you have to wait. Time number, you have to wait. Someone shout amen. And it says here, here we go, we're almost done. It says, then they cast lots and they threw a dice or flipped a coin and that lot fell, fell on who? On Matthias, Mathis. Someone shout amen. So he was added to the 11 apostles. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? You know what these apostles did? They said, you know what, we're going to leave it to luck. 
We're going to leave it to a, throw in a dice game. We're going to leave it to a coin flip in Jesus' mighty name. And listen, the reason a lot of times we start to cry, the reason why a lot of times, hallelujah, uh, God, hallelujah, says I've chosen better is because we refuse to wait on God in Jesus' mighty name. Or someone shout amen. Does this make sense? Listen, we don't serve a God of luck. We don't serve a God, Lord, if I flip this coin, hallelujah, that's the one in Jesus' mighty name. Does that make sense? Are y'all with me in this place? And maybe the reason why we found ourselves crying is because we've left it at luck. We've left it at, Lord, if, if it is, if it is, then it is. If it's not, then it's not. Someone shout amen. But that's not how God works. And it says here, hallelujah, last point and we're done. Last point and we're done in Jesus' mighty name. Because I want to pray with you and I want to send you guys off in the mighty name of Jesus. How many here have been blessed this Sunday morning in the mighty name? Give a big round of applause. It's a whole lot of teaching, a whole lot of teaching this morning. A whole lot of teaching. Here we go. In the book of Acts chapter 9, verse 15, it says, But the Lord said to Aninus, it says, Go, this man is my chosen instrument. Someone shout amen. Someone shout amen. It says, This man is my what? To proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. Here we go. I will show him how much he must suffer in my name. Someone shout amen. Who was he talking about? The Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul wrote a third of the New Testament. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? So listen, listen, hallelujah. It was a good idea for the apostles to say, you know what, this is a good idea. Let's, let's put someone in charge that's been here the longest. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me now? He says, not only that, let's, let's leave it to chance. Let's flip a coin. And wherever this coin uh, lands on, that's the one that God has for us. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me now? But God says, all of you are wrong. Does that make sense? You know why? Because the whole time, God is watching him and saying, you guys are waiting on luck. You guys are waiting to flip a coin. He says, but I already have a chosen instrument. Does that make sense? And I will teach him how much suffer in my name. Listen, hallelujah. God, and I'll conclude with this. God told Samuel, how long are you going to cry for? How much longer are you going to complain? How much longer are you going to look back in Jesus' mighty name? He says, hallelujah, the choice that I have is not the people's choice. Why, hallelujah? Because people are looked at the exterior. People are moved by the exterior. And God is moved by what's on the inside. God is moved by what's inside this heart in Jesus' mighty name. I preached on this on Wednesday, hallelujah. And I said, listen, when David was on his way, listen to me now. David was on his way to feed his brothers because his father sent him. How many other I'm talking about? Someone shout amen. Listen, and the minute his brother, who David was going to go serve, hears his voice. You know what his, ba- his, his brother says? He says, you conceited man, you have a wicked heart. Someone shout amen. Why, hallelujah? Because men only see the outside. Are y'all with me? Listen, hallelujah. His brother is saying he has a wicked heart. But, but the Lord just sent the prophet to anoint him. Why? Because David had a heart after God. Stop leaving things to luck. Stop crying about things that you didn't wait for to hear the response from God. It may not happen tomorrow. It may not happen next week. But I guarantee you, God is not a man that he will lie. That if God said he's going to answer you, that if God said that you are his chosen, that if God said to be still and know that I am God, he's going to work everything out in your favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This Sunday morning, you got to wipe your tears and say, Lord, you're doing something new. Say, Lord, I may not understand it. Lord, I may not see it. But you see the heart of men. You see hallelujah, their posture in the mighty name of Jesus. And this morning I'm not going to cry about things that you removed in my life. I'm going to cry in the presence of God and stay at the feet of Jesus Christ. Someone give a big round of applause. Stand to your feet. I want to pray with you. Man, that's a word. 
And 